this video covers the content of the SAP Cloud Platform Workflow Virtual Events, content which is available on GitHub, and specifically it covers the content for exercise 10, the last exercise, which takes us through accessing contextual information in a script task. So in this particular exercise, first of all, we're going to review the results of the user activity that we had in the previous exercise. And then we're going to add a script task to the workflow definition to go and retrieve the information from that user task activity itself and use that information to create a message that could be ultimately sent to the original requester. Okay, so let's get started. The first thing we want to do is to have a look at the results of the user task activity in the previous workflow instance that we completed, which is this one here. So we've got the Monitor Workflows Workflow Instances app up and running. And the most recent one here is the order process one completed earlier this morning. If we look at the workflow context, we can see the information that was sent in the original request. We can also see the product information that was retrieved via the service task. And we can also see the response, the comments that were entered in the form. Can we find in the context what decision was made, whether an approval action or a rejection action was taken? The answer to that is no. It's available elsewhere, and we're now going to go into the editor to add a script task to find that information. So let's open up the App Studio workflow dev space. And let's have a look at the order process itself. Okay, so we can add a script task in the same way that we previously added a service task and a user task. There we go. And we'll add it here and then we'll reflow with this button. Great. Okay, so now we can set the name to prepare message, for example. We can set names on all of the tasks if we wish. We're just going to set the name on this one for now. Okay, so as it says here, script tasks allow us to write JavaScript. And we can create our JavaScript file that will contain the code for this particular script task with the create file button here. And let's call it also prepare message.js. Notice first of all that the JavaScript file is created for the order process. So we have a directory there within the script directory of the order process workflow. And we get presented with, and I'll close this so we can see it better, a whole series of commented out JavaScript that gives us some examples of what we might want to do. If we just have a look at this code for a second, we can see that there are some fundamental properties that are available to us. We can get access to the context through $.context. We can get access to information about the instance itself with $.info. And also we can get access to information relating to the user tasks with $.usertasks. Okay, so you can have a look yourself a little bit more at these examples, but what we're going to do here is add a bit of code ourselves. So we can either leave this commented code in or remove it. I'm going to remove it and just have that single line there. Okay. So as the note says here, if you're doing this or redoing this, it may be that the user task definition is not user task one, but it might be user task two, depending on how many other user tasks you might have created beforehand. So just double check that it really is user task one, because that's what's being referred to here. Okay. So now all this is doing is it's taking the information from the latest user task within the user tasks object itself and assigning that information to a new node user task info in the context. So that's all we need in our prepare message for now. So let's close that. And we're now ready to follow the usual build deploy flow. So again, we'll do it in the terminal. Great, so that deployment has now finished. So 
now it's finished we can just create one more instance of the workflow definition again using postman so we'll bring up postman again we'll hit the send button and now we have <coughs> 201 created our instance id is 9c9e for reference okay so let's pop to the my inbox app and look for the new user task we'll make a comment and then decide on an approval or a rejection so if we go into here there we can see the user task just appearing in my inbox and we're going to make a comment in fact i'll make the same comment as in this screenshot here because why not you have enough notebooks already and i'm going to reject this particular request so as i've made a decision the user task instance disappears from my inbox and now we can check in the instances it's going to be completed of course because as we can see here we completed it just now we can check in the workflow context there's the original request that we got from postman with 26 there's the comment that i entered and now if we look a little bit further down we can see the decision is reject and that's actually within an object here in the user task info node that's been created exactly because of what we specified in this prepare message.js file so now just as a final step in this last exercise we can enhance this a little bit by modifying the message so that it can be eventually sent and would make sense to the original requester so let's copy this code in to there and that just concatenates some strings together and uses whatever value is in the decision node of the user task info that we've saved to show the requester whether the request was approved or rejected so we've saved that let's just do the build and deploy again i'll clear the screen and start from there great so let's create one more request full screen send final request let's minimize that again and now we can see if we refresh the list of instances we can see we have our new instance and it's in the running state all we've got is the original request content and the product info info that's been retrieved via the service task so let's move over to my inbox where we should see that request And we'll reject that one again okay so let's have a quick look now at the instance it's now completed and we can see in the workflow content there's the comment that i just entered and now the message that's been constructed and saved in the message node is exactly appropriate for sending back to the original requester sending that back is an exercise left for you so that brings us to the end of this exercise. We're now familiar with script tasks as well as service tasks and user tasks and how to retrieve and manipulate information relating to the context, to the information regarding the instance itself and to the information from user tasks. Thanks for watching.